G'day guys, my name is Caleb, otherwise known as the Critic Kebab. In the lead up to the 94th Academy Awards, I will be making a verdict on whether the films nominated for Best Picture are actually worthy of winning that extremely prestigious gold trophy. I will be giving my thoughts and breaking down the pros and cons of all these movies and explaining why they are so great. That is, if they're even good at all. There will be a playlist with all the videos, so make sure you check them out. And follow me on Letterboxd if you want to see my ranking of these 2021 Best Picture films. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on more content like this. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing Nightmare Alley, which stars Bradley Cooper, Rooney Mara, as well as Kate Blanchett, and is directed by Guillermo del Toro. This is an absolutely stunning film. Exceptionally well made, and the talent both behind and in front of the camera are bringing their A-game. Now, this is not a remake of the 1947 film of the same name, but is actually a re-adaptation of William Lindsay Gresham's novel. And according to Del Toro, it depicts the flip side of the American dream. That being a nightmare. Nightmare Alley is about a man called Stanton. In the opening scene of this film, we see him dispose of a body and exit without leaving a trace. Now, with nowhere else to go, this mystery man joins a nearby traveling circus where he meets a psychic, played by Tony Collette, and a mentalist, played by David Strathine. Stan takes an interest in their craft and decides to learn everything possible from them so he can do it bigger and better. With time, he not only perfects his mentalist abilities, but he also becomes a successful showman, which leads him down a treacherous path where he loses sight of how far he's crossed that ethical line. That is by far my favorite element of the story, the character progression. Bradley Cooper does an exceptional job portraying this damaged man who has a mission and doesn't care about the ramifications on other people because his ego is so inflated. He does literally everything possible to avoid ramifications affecting him, but takes no care in what happens to those he performs for. The best example of this is Judge Hill and his wife. Stan has no moral line. All he cares about is money, status, and prestige. And the extreme lengths he goes to is what makes this film entertaining. Seeing where Stan starts, all the chaos he undergoes, sweeping up Molly in the process, then where he finishes, it really is a great, poetic, tragic ending. I loved the balance between subtle and overt storytelling as well. Del Toro uses lots of visuals to foreshadow what is to come. Stan being surrounded by chickens in cages, something he will become accustomed to very soon, as well as many other small little details here and there for those paying close attention. Stan taking pride in not being an alcoholic was also very interesting. We come to learn that his relationship with his father was very distasteful, and at the core of that relationship was alcohol misuse. Again, seeing Stan being so hard against drinking it, to then becoming a full-blown drunk hobo, it really ties into what he says at the end. I was bored for it. <laughs> the dynamic between Bradley Cooper and Kate Blanchett, the psychiatrist, was also very captivating. Their acting has so many layers, because you have two masters of their craft trying to outsmart each other, whilst taking advantage of the other, whilst also coming together to have an affair. Great performances by the pair. And this is where I'll lead into my first negative. The chemistry between Bradley Cooper and Rooney Mara was nice, but I felt that Molly as a character was underdeveloped. She plays a critical role as the love companion, 
but if the screenplay invested more in this character, then I feel the journey Stan and Molly go on would have been more impactful by the time it falls apart. The ending still hits hard, but it could have been much better. My only other negative for this film is that Act 1 relies on narrative intrigue a lot, and it doesn't become clear until 30 minutes into the film what the story trajectory really is. Hey Pete, I'd love to learn anything that you'd want to teach me. Once you discover that Stan is going to upskill as a mentalist, the story becomes fully engaging. And that's thanks to so many great performances. Shout out to Willem Dafoe. Other than that, I found almost everything else about this film to be amazing. The costume design is phenomenal. So many great outfits and silhouette shots that profile these characters beautifully. I loved the cinematography as well. The camera movement is exquisite and the lighting is perfect all the way through. This is helped by the expert production design and amazing sets that were created by Tamara Deverell and her team. Overall, this was a really enchanting movie. And what I mean by that is that as soon as you become hooked around the 30 minute mark, you go on this crazy journey with Stan as he pulls off unethical scam after scam and watch the rise and descent into madness unfold over the course of two and a half hours. It's dramatic, it's exciting, it's got intrigue and mystery, a love story, emotional highs and lows, and a terrific ending that showcases the acting ability of Bradley Cooper. A worthy nominee for Best Picture, and in my opinion, a frontrunner to win. Nightmare Alley is a great film. It is very well written, and the technical accomplishments from every department is worthy of praise especially the production design, the cinematography, and Guillermo del Toro's direction. Those are my thoughts on Nightmare Alley. Let me know what you thought of the movie down below, and do you think it has a chance of winning the Oscar for Best Picture at this year's 94th Academy Awards? Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Letterboxd, and stay tuned for the next review coming very soon.